Hey guys, it's your Malaysian girl Jean here. I am based at overseas right now at Mauritania, so I don't get to experience Bazaar Ramadan this year as well as um, most of the people because of the pandemic, right? And one thing I miss the most at Bazaar Ramadan is Popia Sira. First thing first, can you guys pretend that this is turnip or yambin or commonly known as sengkwang for most Malaysians? I mistakenly bought some kind of sweet potato and there's no turning back because I've promised my friend that I will do Popia Sira for them. I am committed to finish this dish as if like I have the real sengkwang so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it like in sticks like skinny french fries like that so it won't be too wet after we cooked it now I've cut it a bit too long so I'm just gonna half it like so and put it aside now if you notice, I actually grated one carrot and put it aside at the back there. Next, I'm chopping up some ikan bilis or dried anchovies because I don't want to use those chicken stock cubes or ikan bilis stock cubes. If you don't have ikan bilis, you can use dried prawns too. These ingredients actually provide the umami flavor to the whole dish lah. On the other side, I'm toasting, I mean air fry, some peanuts without any oil or anything, just the peanuts. In 140 degrees Celsius, 15 minutes. Don't forget to toss it around in the middle, yeah? Next, heat up a pan with some oil, put in minced garlic and diced Holland onion. I use Holland onion because I intend to keep the popia in tea looking white white like that lah. So you to mix to mix these two ingredients until about half cooked, not fully cooked yet lah. Not very golden golden none yet ah. This is when you add in the chopped ikan bilis just now remember the so-called replacement for those chicken stock cubes and ikan bilis stock cubes lah when these all three ingredients go golden golden non ready that's when you can put in the grated carrots and sengkwang you don't see me but my hands are literally doing the inverted commas on the sengkwang ah. mix them up well and actually this mix right it won't cook until you add some water so here i am adding a quarter of water a few dashes of white pepper i like the white pepper to be strong here so i'm putting a bit more now i don't add in salt but to give that saltiness and more umami flavor Ah. And if you notice, I don't use oyster sauce because remember, I want to keep my inti looking white white. We have fish sauce, so don't worry. Now close the lid and let it cook for a while, about 5 minutes like that lah. And then you open up, give it a good toast, and then that's when you do a taste test to see whether this inti is ready. Just pick up one, two piece and eat it. Gordon Ramsay always says that you have to eat and try your food before you serve it to people. In my case, the popia filling, the inti is ready. Okay, before I start wrapping the popia, this is something extra, huh? it's not compulsory. I just fried up some ikan bilis, dried anchovies to provide an extra crunch of umami in the popia. Okay, the toasted peanuts or air fried peanuts. Okay, this is a tip, lah. maybe some of you already know. So what I do to remove the skin is I just put it in my pestle and mortar and then I just lightly swirls around like go round and round and round like that somehow the skin will just separate from the nuts you have to pour it out on a flat surface or plate and then go out of your house or somewhere you don't have to sweep the floor and then you just blow away the skin if you're staying in a condo don't go to your balcony and blow it off uh. it will fly to other people's house and then you are left with these skin peanuts and then I cry the peanuts not too crush la chunky a bit so we can still feel the texture of the crunch and put it aside okay wrapping time okay the popia skin is square one right we want to lay it out in diamond shape like so okay and then we want to put the filling the inti la this area now take a spoonful of the filling one spoonful is enough put on the area that i mentioned earlier here i put a little bit of the fried ikan bilis again not compulsory yeah now i lift up this bottom corner up and turn one round in so the filling is secured with the popia skin and then fold left in and right in like so and then go one round up again and then we can see it's sort of like a sample surat envelope kind of shape and then apply flour glue on the top corner area flour glue is actually a mix of flour and water only la. continue with rolling it up and that's it look shantik very secure and very neat now I give you a fast recap actually if you want to put two tablespoons of the filling also can la. <coughs> Whoa, see? Jato also still very secure. Before frying the popia, let's fry some shallots first for garnishing. How many shallots to fry, you ask? Well, 
honestly there's no exact answer to this because for me the more it is the better taste it is it's up to you i would say at least five bouts la five bg like that okay finally popia frying time actually there's nothing much to talk about frying popia it's just fried but something perhaps i can share on how i save oil for deep frying like this is to use a really small pot and then i have to take a bit more time to fry because like this small pot can only fit three popia at a time oh oh, oh. and uh, i actually did an experiment i took out two of the popia and then spray some oil and put in the air fryer 140 degrees celsius for 20 minutes and halfway through i flip it and spray another quart of oil also okay cooking the chili sauce time now this is my kind of secret weapon lah i'm using using butter somehow the butter gives a lemot lemot taste to this sauce melt it on the heated pan and in goes the minced garlic pan fry the minced garlic with the butter until the minced garlic is like a golden golden nun a bit and then you add in about quarter cup of sugar i'm using brown sugar and then uh, i must tell you guys lah ha huh? i was actually rushing when i'm cooking this sauce i was actually rushing out for iftar with my friends and by right we should let the brown sugar sit and let it cook and melt on its own so it caramelized naturally lah so to speak that one need patience yeah and then i just add in one blended red onion with a little bit of water and this dried chili powder with a bit of water those ready-made chili giling also can be used to substitute this dried chili powder with water lah. and then cook to mix cow cow and make sure this blended red onion and the dried chili is cooked to cook this sauce especially with the blended red onion and also the dried chili powder it takes some time yeah gotta be patient so you can add in salt to taste and a little bit of water to coat the fried popia when it thickens you need to test out the sauce whether it's cooked or not and whether the seasonings are enough and when it's ready off the flame and then just throw in the fried popia and goes tossing around serve it on a plate or whatever but we're not done yet there's another very very important thing about this dish is the garnishing remember what we did earlier the fried shallots the crushed peanuts and also you need to use some toasted white sesame just garnish them on top and you're done wow look it look it how can you not love this messy looking popia Sira, man. Oh, by the way, air fried popia. Sorry, not recommended. Too dry. Even the crispy part is supposed to be crispy, but it's too hard to even bite on it. All right, wishing all the Muslim friends Selamat Hari Raya. Happy cooking.